So the World Economic Forum in 2016, the report says that by 65% of children going to primary school in 2016 would grow up in a job which would take a job in there when they grow up which does not exist today. So think about it, it's only seven years ago anyway. All right? um, also the World Economic Forum says it's working with over 350 organizations to provide about 1 billion people with better education. 1.1 billion jobs are liable to be radically transformed by technology in the next decade. Just get your head around that number for a minute. Um, also the World Economic Forum, I spent a lot of time with these guys, um, they published a report in 2020. It estimates that by 2025, 85 million jobs will be displaced by a shift in the division of labor between man and machine. And you can see that happening today with things like chat, GPT, and others. 97 million new jobs that do not exist today will likely emerge in the next couple of years. Again, scary thought. Um, COVID had a lot to do with some of this because people were forced to actually reskill themselves, um, you know, work from home, get new technology skills, video conferencing skills, and remote telework skills, etc. So that again was something that was forced in a way by nature, if, you, if that's the right word. Um, the labor market is still undergoing profound changes. And if you look around you in uh, a lot of corporations, you will realize that they are completely changing the way their employees work for them now. A lot of employees actually prefer the work from home uh, uh, environment and, and so you know the, the employer, employers have to deal with that as well. Um, the advancement of te te disruptive technology of course is all, already part of it. Now I can kind of relate to that having spent about 32 years in trying to make that disruption happen in many parts of the world. Um, so I would argue that an urgent investment in human capital is required to create a much fairer world if we are going to go forward. Uh, top skills have changing rapidly, okay? So analytical thinking and innovation, active learning, critical thinking, complex problem solving capability, and skills in self-management, especially with stress tolerance and flexibility. I see that more and more uh, in the millennials today, the need for doing that than perhaps when I was that age but it's also part of the ever-changing environment of technology uh, around the world. Um, analytical thinking and innovation is listed today as the number one skill, but back in 2015 and 2020, it didn't even exist on the list. So that's how rapidly things are changing. Complex problem solving is the third most important skill in 2025 list, was, was ranked number one in 2015 and 2020. Uh, I guess ChatGPT will take care of that for us in the future. Uh, schools, retailers, banks, look around you everywhere. Businesses are emerging from the crisis of COVID and the disruptive change into a world of physical distancing and this changing the way customers behave and their preferences. And maybe we don't see that too much in Pakistan, but if you go even out of here to Dubai and the non-west to Europe and so on, you will see that that is absolutely happening as we speak. Most people today learn these skills over online programs such as you know YouTube and, and self-training videos, um, and, and COVID has also emphasized that as we move forward. Um, now, and again, 5G, as you know, is a technology which is almost here. It obviously relates to faster speeds of data, lower latencies, and, and massive device connectivity all across the world. Um, now, 5G, again, remember, is not going to be enough for a lot of the IoT, Internet of Things devices. Uh, and we are waiting for 6G. Um, I started my career when it was barely 2G, so it's been a rapid <laughs> deployment over the years. Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say in the five minutes is that everything is changing and it's changing really, really fast, guys. So it's time to wake up. The increasing shift towards the digital economy requires a reskilling of the labor force. And I would argue not just the labor force. We're talking reskilling and upskilling our bureaucracy, our judiciary, uh, our workforce in general. Um, it, it's just a desperate time that we need to recognize is happening right now. Uh, 
Where are we with all this in Pakistan? Again, not enough time to explain all of it, but I just wanted to raise a few pointers which hopefully will keep you awake the next week or so. Um, our technology policy makers need to rapidly change the, and rethink the way they are currently handling this. Their attitude is to tax heavily and the, the, uh, the, 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 the platforms which give you the connectivity, the, the ISPs, the telcos, and charge them massively expensive licenses instead of incentivizing them for increased connectivity. Our media regulators need to facilitate all of this rather than the proliferation of this rather than go around banning these things and restricting the, the availability of these uh, platforms. Um, and there's an urgent need, which I've been speaking about for about five or six years now, to revamp our education system. Desperately needed. The, the government introduced the curriculum reform program a few years ago to align the curriculum with emerging needs, but I argue again when you look at it that it needs a rapid review and, and re, a revamp very, very quickly. We need to analyze the roles of our schools and universities. What are they doing on their own rather than just depend on government policy? Um, even more important, what is our corporate sector doing about it? Well, Kimberly, what is our corporate sector doing about all of this? Now, I am a product of, a, I don't know if I'm supposed not to mention the names, but two very large corporations over the years. I'm a product because they trained the hell out of me. Millions of dollars were spent in training people like me, and a lot of those are today the chief executives of companies around Pakistan and in the region. That's why they are there, because they, were, they had investment in training. When I ran one of the largest mobile companies in the country, uh, we invested several million dollars a year to make sure that our employees were prepared for what was coming next. As a result of that, a lot of them are all across the industry today, but not only in the country, but also in the region, and as far away as the Caribbean and the UK and so on. So a fresh new approach is required for thinking even within the corporates and the, and the business sector. We need to further enable our technology entrepreneurs, the startup ecosystem, which you know we spent the last seven years or so uh, doing that, recognizing that this is something that is desperately required. And we need to encourage them with policies and platforms to encourage the digitization and keep abreast with technology. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to declare a national emergency. And there's no two ways about it. Hope that keeps you awake for a while. Thank you. Thank you very much.